Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And we know from the previous chapter they were in the upper room. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, we could say sweeping in the room. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now let me just say this. They were actually in the upper room for 10 days. Some say seven days, some say 10 days. A while, a week. They estimate that there was probably about 150 people at his ascension. But on the day of Pentecost, there were just a few. And they kept waiting, and they kept seeking, and they kept praying. When he said to them, go back and wait for the promise of the Father, what was he telling them about? The Holy Spirit, right? So here's the thing. Nobody in history had ever been filled with the Holy Spirit until that day. Now, you can look at the Old Testament, and it would say things like, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. So the Holy Spirit came upon King David. The Holy Spirit came upon the Old Testament prophets. And the Holy Spirit came upon people in the Old Covenant. But for the first time in history, the Holy Spirit was going to come into into people. And Jesus said, go back and wait for this, and I'll send the promise of the Father to you. Now, they were up there for a week to 10 days, waiting, probably praying, probably worshiping, probably reading the scriptures, probably doing what we do, right? Waiting. Did they know what they were waiting for? They knew here. They didn't know here. They didn't know what to expect. They kept waiting and waiting. I imagine the Spirit of the Lord came upon them during that time, from time to time, just like when we worship. Could you sense the presence of the Lord here today? Okay? And I imagine that there was some of that if you're in worship and if you're in prayer, that's going to happen. But I always think a little bit like this is like a woman that is nine months pregnant with her first baby. How many, how many ladies remember that? And when you come down to those last days, you feel a lot of things. You feel a lot of squeezes, a lot of twinges. You even feel some contractions. You even feel a little bit of pain. And while you're waiting to deliver, you wonder, is this it? You have a twinge and you wonder, is this it? You have a sensation and you go, is this it? But how many know when real labor hits, you know you got it? Y'all remember? It's like, oh, now I remember. Now I understand. Well, that's kind of how I think it was on the day of Pentecost. They're waiting, waiting. I wonder if this is it. I wonder. Jesus didn't tell them how long to wait for. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. And suddenly it's like, this is it. Suddenly the room was filled with the sound of a rushing mighty wind. And this pillar of fire came down and separated into flames of fire and sat on every one of their heads. And they started speaking in these tongues, these unknown languages that they'd never heard of. This was the first time in history that the Holy Spirit had come to indwell them. Now notice this. The first thing it did was fill the room. And then it filled them. Two fillings. It filled the room. Then it filled them. That's why it's so important that we gather together. Can you be filled with the Holy Spirit in your homes? Yes, absolutely. But there's something about coming together in a corporate setting when people are worshiping and praying together that God loves to come down and fill the room. Come on, he fills the room and in filling the room, he fills us over and over and over again. Come on, how many have been filled with the Holy Ghost more than once? I hope you get filled with the Holy Ghost every single day. I hope that it pours into you. You know what this word fi filled means? It is the Greek word pleiroo, pleiroo. And it actually means this, to cram full. That's actually.
actually the definition out of the Strong's Concordance, to cram full, to fill until full, to furnish or supply liberally. See, God's not just going to give you a little dose of the ghost. He's going to give you the whole thing. He's going to fill us to the brim and overflowing with the Holy Ghost. He wants the Holy Ghost to spill out of us. Right? How many know if I had a, a cup of coffee up here and it was full and I tried to walk really, really fast, what's going to spill out? Whatever's inside. So when you're going about the things of God, there should be something spilling out of you. You should be so full that there's something constantly spilling out of you. And if you're not living that lifestyle, I'm going to invite you today to try to live and to enter into that place that Jesus has told us that we could actually be filled to the brim and overflowing with the Holy Spirit. And when you start living that kind of lifestyle, it'll change your life. Bishop says this. My husband's going to sow a seed. He's also going to move the thing because he can just see his wife and he knows his wife. So Bishop says this. Bishop says the very best gift that God the Father could give to the earth, could give to humanity, was to give his only son, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. When Jesus was getting ready to leave this earth, the very best gift Jesus could give to us is his spirit, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit that he could give to us. Jesus said, you're not going to be able to change the world without it. So go back to Jerusalem and wait until I send it to you. And then the very best gift that the Holy Spirit can give us is our prayer language, the gift of tongues. Come on, Paul said, I thank God that I pray in tongues more than all of you. I think that's probably what Bishop Hammond says because that man never stops praying in tongues. 87 years old and praying in tongues by the hour is an example to all of us. And so all of this actually happened in an upper room. Now, why did God choose to let the upper room be this place of incredible outpouring? Because there, there is a history in the scripture of upper rooms. Upper rooms were places of revival. Upper rooms were places of resurrection life. Elijah raised a boy from the dead in an upper room. And then in the next generation, Elisha raised the Shunammite son from the dead in an upper room. In upper rooms, things come alive. In upper rooms, God stirs intercession to bring people out of death into life. Did I see Brenna here today? I didn't see Brenna. Brenna's not here. You know what? Brenna, Kinesis' dad, has come out of death into life. Come on, he needed a kidney transplant, but then his heart went bad. His, he had all kinds of physical issues. I think the doctors were on the verge of giving up. But I'll tell you what, he actually had a kidney. He had a heart issue, and they, they did a surgery for that. They did a kidney transplant, and then he had all kinds of struggles. We kept praying and praying and praying. And I'll tell you what happened out of our prayers. He actually received a new kidney, and he actually came home this week or is coming home this week. Come on, guys, we serve a God that hears our prayers he hears our intercession and when we carry things up into that upper room things begin to change 